We needed to talk about Dolphins quarterback Tua Tagovailoa exclusively today. But then sometimes some things in life just come and smack you in the face, and they must be addressed in that moment, and that's DeMar Hamlin, Bill Safety, who got injured last night, required CPR on the field. I mean, the scariest sight you've ever seen. I've seen multiple players, AK Keys when I was in college at Oregon, and Keith Mitchell when I was in Jacksonville, both get carted off and us not know what the hell was going on with them physically, and we still had to go play. But all of this reminds me of the thing that I'd learned as I played in the NFL. And this lesson actually rubbed one teammate who had been had a long, successful career the wrong way, where I said that football is a job. It's not a career. This is a short-term thing. And truthfully, like winning is cool and winning is important, but the entire point of playing professional sports is to set yourself up and to give yourself a head start out in the world. And the DeMar Hamlin situation just proves that you never know when your last snap is going to be. So yes, you are supposed to take advantage. You are supposed to enjoy it and all of those things. But your life outside of football matters way more than your life inside of football. And now specifically the Dolphins, they just lost five straight games. They need a win next week along with a Patriots loss to make the playoffs for the first time since 2016. And there might be some sort of incentive to want to it to play, but that absolutely should not happen. He's had three concussions this season, two of them for sure documented. And the other one, we all saw what it was on that Thursday night against the Bengals. And I've seen people say that Tua's career should be over. And to that, I say, you shouldn't be on the field dealing and trying to make decisions about playing or not when you have a concussion and you damn sure shouldn't be making permanent decisions about your future while you still have this going on and lingering as well. It's clear that Tua's season should be over, though. And any decision about his career needs to be made in the offseason after consulting with his family and medical professionals. But what complicates matters for Tua this year is that he's actually proved that he's a pretty good quarterback and he can run the hell out of Mike McDaniel's offense. And he's probably looking at $150 million plus guaranteed payday if he's able to continue playing football. But that's a big if. And I get his predicament as much as anyone. I loved my time in the NFL, and it was an honor and a blessing to play the game that I loved at the highest level. But I found out what everybody outside of the all-time greats, and even some of them find out, that the game will never love you as much as you loved it. And Football Incorporated will chew you up and spit you out so you can't lose sight of what actually being a professional athlete is about. It is setting yourself up for the decades that go on after that, for changing your family's fortunes, for opportunities, career advancement, giving your kids a better life. And the goal should never be about how far you can take football. It has to be that you are setting yourself up and your family for after football. So that means that, you're, that it's a sliding scale with your your health, your finances, and all of that stuff. Because you're going to spend at least three times as much of your days on earth not playing football as you do unless you're Tom Brady. And when the game's finished with you, your life is not over. You still need to work. Whether you're Deshaun Kaiser or Peyton Manning, you still need to compete, keep your mind active, and find ways to give back. Because idle hands are the devil's playground, and being a man of means doesn't change that. You can make, I tell my son, you can make all the money in the world. You still got to go to work. I've worked with Alex Rodriguez, with Marcellus Wiley, and other people who've made really, really good money. And guess what they're doing? They're out freaking working. Unless you want to pay another grown man's bills to, to, to just hang out with you. And then you might end up like Antoine Walker or some other guys who have been on the broke 30 for 30. And if anything, money just makes more of a devil's theme park than an actual playground. So if Tua does decide to walk away, there's no shame. He's going to collect at least $30 million off his rookie deal. And that's even if Miami doesn't do right by him and pick up his fifth year option just to make sure that he's okay for his sacrifice of his body to the team. 
And he's more than given himself and his family a financial leg up and opportunities. And I speak from experience when I say that medical issues, that if they do force Tua to step away, it actually might take him a long time to realize how fortunate he was to experience the limited success that he had. It took me almost seven years outside of football to be able to watch games. I was able to watch college, but couldn't watch the NFL because I felt a bitterness of going out of the league with injuries when I could still actually play. It took me a long time to realize that I hadn't failed anybody, even if my body did fail me. I didn't fail. I had success. I was double the career average. I got it, got drafted. Like I'm in a small minority of people, even though it didn't end up the way that I thought and the way that I dreamed and envisioned, I'm still a success for that. And no matter what Tua decides, he's a winner. And if he's forced to choose between an abundant life off the field over an abundant life on the field, that's really no choice at all, is it? And at the end of the day, only one of those things truly matters. For Tua, for DeMar Hamlin, let that sink in.